Hi there folks, in the last video I talked about how Scotland has lost most of its native woodland and now we are down to only 4% native tree cover in this country. So it's all very well telling you about it. I now want to come out into the hills and try and show you, to give you an understanding of what it is that we're missing. If you look behind me, you'll see what is considered a classic Scottish view. We've got rolling heather moorland, We've got these dense blocks of conifer forestry woodland used for timber and we've got a little bit of native woodland cover just here and some trees just dotted about. This is considered to be a normal view in Scotland. People go out climbing the hills, posting photographs on Instagram and social media of their day out in the hills of the views that they see, most people look at that and think that this is the way that Scotland should look. But should it really? I think we can do better than this. So just behind the camera, about 50 metres away, I'm going to show you something that might give you a little bit more of an understanding of the kind of biodiversity and habitats that we're missing from this country. So let's go there now. Okay, so here we are in a gully, a little gully with a burn running through it. And if you look behind me, you'll see there's trees. But why is there trees in here and there's no trees on the hills that we were looking at earlier? Well, the reason is simply no burning and no overgrazing. The heather in here isn't being burnt for shooting grouse. And due to the steep rocky conditions in the gully, deer and sheep struggle to get in here to graze the vegetation and as a result what we see here is we see trees clinging on to survival really. As I look around me now I can see at least three species of tree in here. We've got some aspen, some willow and some rowan trees. There was also some birch just further down the gully and further up as well. But it's not just the trees that are able to survive in here. You look at the ground level, there's all sorts of different plants which are able to grow. Able to grow bushy and tall. I'm showing you this gully because this represents what Scotland might be able to look like if nature was allowed to flourish. If able to, these trees would just spread from the gully. They would spread out and across the hills, but they can't because of the grazing pressure and from burning. If we could enable rewilding in Scotland, allow ecological restoration to happen, habitats like these don't need to be restricted to gullies. They could be everywhere, all over the hills. And wouldn't that be a good thing? Wouldn't that be a good thing for nature and for wildlife to have a little bit more diversity? Imagine how more exciting hill walks would be in this country if, you, if your walk started in native woodland, the trail winding its way through the forest up to the tree line to be rewarded with a magnificent view of the hills covered in a variety of different habitats. And it's not just this gully where trees are growing. I've seen this all over Scotland. I've seen people make all sorts of reasons why Scotland doesn't have more trees. For example, Scotland's too windy, it's too rocky, the climate's too harsh, trees can't grow in the cold, wet climate. And it's just simply not true. And this is living proof of that. The reason is simply down to overgrazing and burning. And if we, if we were to reduce these elements and let the landscape breathe a little bit, 
little woodland, little forests of gullies like this would expand and spread, creating a richer landscape and more habitats for wildlife. Okay, so before I wrap this video up, I just want to show you some more examples of these gullies that I've come across in Scotland, because I feel that some of you may be sitting at home unconvinced by what I've shown you in the gully in the video. So if we start here, just off Glen Shiel, I was coming down from a Munro and came across this lovely little patch of ribbon trees. And I feel this picture really shows you just how empty our hillsides are. And you can see that the trees are managing to cling on to survival here in this in this gully because the grazing animals, the sheep and deer, they get, they can't reach them. They're they're tucked right in there in that steep gully. And here we have another view of the same gully just looking down the hill. And again you can see our hillsides are just bare. <laughs> There's just nothing there. You've got the odd trees clinging on here in the gully and everywhere else is just it's just bare. And for a lot of people in Scotland, this is this is norm this looks normal to them. This is this is how Scotland looks, how it it's maybe always looked. I really like this ravine here. This was taken on Sky and you can see above the ravine the land is, is empty. There are no trees, uh, no scrubby bushes visible. But as soon as the land drops into this ravine, you have this wonderful lush area of willow trees and rowan. I think there's some hazel in there as well. And it's gorgeous. It looks beautiful. But it's restricted to this gully because, again, the deer and the sheep, they can't, they can't reach this stuff because it's just too steep for them to get to. But the rest of the hillsides would have once looked like this. And they could look like that again. Here's another example from Glen Tilt, and again, steep ravine, lots of trees growing in there, but everywhere else, the lands are empty. And I've saved the best picture to last. This is just a glorious example of what our land could look like when grazing pressure is significantly reduced. And the reason this gully looks like this is because they are fenced off with deer fencing. There's a massive variety of plant life in here. And this is great for invertebrates, which is in turn great for birds. The leaf litter, which falls into the burn, that adds nutrients to the water, which is good for aquatic life, good for fish as well. These gullies are representative of what can be achieved when grazing pressure is reduced or burning is eliminated on the hills. But as I said, these kinds of lush, beautiful habitats which are great for wildlife, they don't have to be restricted to the gullies. We can transform our hillsides. And these are the kind of results we can get when ecological restoration is applied at landscape scale. Another shot here taken in Glen Affric, just an amazing place in Scotland, just tremendous. If you've never been there, I highly recommend it. It almost feels like you're going back in time thousands of years. But these places are the result of reducing grazing pressure to, to allow trees and vegetation to naturally regenerate, also assisted with some tree planting as well. Most of our hillsides look a little bit like this, or this, and it's clear that we are capable of so much better. If you remain unconvinced by what I've shown you in this video, then what I would ask you to do is to have a look at your Maps app on your phone and just start zooming in to different parts of the Scottish Highlands. If you zoom in and move around, it will become clear very quickly that there's hardly any tree cover whatsoever. A lot of the tree cover that you may see will resemble these thick forestry blocks that you see in the background here, but they've been planted for timber. They have not been planted in the best interests of biodiversity. Perhaps that's something that I can show you in a future video. Now I'm not saying that we should cloak every square inch of Scotland in woodland. Open moorlands and grasslands are also important habitats for a variety of other species as well. But with only 4% woodland cover in Scotland, it is obvious that we do not have enough native woodland in this country. 
So on that note, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. And also thank you to the 52 people who have subscribed to the channel. If you have not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. And if you do, then you'll be among the first people to see the new videos that I upload in the future. Thanks again for watching.